The film begins by showing a recording of a little girl named Kayla. She appears very happy with both her parents. Then it shows Kayla as a teenager. Currently, she is with her mother and her mother's boyfriend. Now, Kayla's parents are divorced. She is on her way to her father's place. But before going there, her mother stops by the airport to drop off her boyfriend. Here, it is clear that Kayla does not like her mother's relationship with her boyfriend. Then they continue to her father's place. On the way, her mother also reminds Kayla not to lose her inhaler again because Kayla has asthma. When they arrive, her father, Jay, introduces a woman named Trini to Rebecca, Kayla's mother. Kayla looks disappointed and doesn't like her. She immediately gets into the car and sits in the back seat. On the way to the retreat, she sees her friend, Brittany. Kayla immediately asks her father to stop so Brittany can join them. But while in the car, Brittany occasionally flirts with her father. Kayla starts to dislike her friend's behavior. A moment later, Brittany asks to stop the car because she needs to pee. Finally, Jay stops the car in the middle of the forest. They both quickly run into the trees. After waiting for a long time, they haven't returned. Jay becomes worried and tries to find them. Suddenly, he hears Kayla screaming. Jay quickly runs towards the scream. He sees Kayla sitting still on a bridge. Jay carries her down and asks where Brittany is. Kayla stays silent, only looking down the bridge. Jay, seeing Brittany's wallet below, runs there and searches for Brittany but doesn't find her. He only finds Brittany's wallet and phone. At that moment, Jay calls the police, but Kayla stops him and says that she pushed Brittany. On the road, a car suddenly passes by, and Jay quickly pulls Kayla under the car so they won't be seen by the driver. They both return to Kayla's mother, but Rebecca, who doesn't know what happened, just gets mad at Jay. When Rebecca meets Kayla, she sees Kayla vomiting. Rebecca quickly takes her home. At home, Jay still can't tell Rebecca. Until Rebecca asks about Kayla's torn shirt, Kayla finally tells her mother. Rebecca is shocked to hear everything. Now Jay and Rebecca start arguing because Jay wants to find a good lawyer to help Kayla's legal process. But Rebecca thinks it was murder. So despite being 15 years old, Kayla will be punished as an adult. Now Rebecca turns angry because Jay should have called the police when it happened. Rebecca wants to return to the scene to find out if Brittany might still be alive. Jay then stopped her because he believed Brittany was already dead. He convinced Rebecca not to ruin Kayla's life, saying that all they needed to do was keep this secret and make an alibi that they never went to the retreat because Kayla was sick. The next morning, Kayla woke up as usual and asked for breakfast. Rebecca was quite surprised by Kayla's behavior as if nothing had happened. Then the doorbell rang, and her father came to see Kayla. Rebecca told Jay that Kayla seemed normal. Jay said maybe Kayla was shocked, but their conversation eventually turned into an argument. Seeing this from upstairs, Kayla shouted and ran out of the house. Jay quickly chased her and dragged her back into the house, but Kayla kept screaming, saying that she deliberately pushed Brittany. Her father, angry upon hearing this, pushed her, causing her to fall. Jay immediately regretted treating Kayla that way and left in a state of stress. Shortly afterward, the doorbell rang again. Brittany's father, Sam, had arrived, asking if Kayla had seen Brittany because the school had just called him. Rebecca quickly made an excuse that Kayla didn't go because she was sick. Sam also mentioned that he had an argument with Brittany before the retreat, so maybe Brittany was upset with him. Sam wanted to speak to Kayla directly about his daughter, but Rebecca told him that Kayla was at the doctor and that she would ask Kayla to call him later. After Sam left, Rebecca felt very guilty and couldn't hold back her tears. She then asked Kayla to call Sam, pretending to be sick and not attending the retreat, but Kayla refused. Eventually, Sam called Rebecca several times, but she didn't dare to answer. Sam returned and kept ringing the doorbell. They could only stay silent inside to avoid him. Jay returned shortly after. After hearing about Sam, Jay suggested they stay in a hotel for a while to calm down. However, as Rebecca was putting things in the car, Sam approached her to ask about Kayla. When Rebecca started to struggle to answer, Jay came out and said that Kayla was still at the hospital. But then Kayla came out of the house, making Sam suspicious. He wanted to ask Kayla about Brittany, but Jay kept holding him back until Sam in anger hit him and threatened to report everything to the police. Rebecca took Jay inside to treat his wound. They reminisced about the past and shared a small laugh, 
making Kayla happy to see her parents laughing together again from behind the door. But in any case, they couldn't hide their worry because Sam might soon report everything to the police. Previously, Sam had mentioned he had a fight with Brittany. So Jay asked Rebecca to talk to her friend in the police to make a report, as if after hurting his daughter, it would make Sam the suspect in Brittany's death. Although Rebecca initially refused, after thinking about her daughter's future, she went to meet her friend, Detective Kenji. Here, Rebecca just mentioned that she was a little worried about Kayla's friend named Brittany, who had been missing for a day and possibly experienced violence from her father. Hearing this, Detective Kenji promised to investigate it. Meanwhile, Jay tried to calm Kayla. Accidentally, he saw that her hand had some self-inflicted scratches. Here, Kayla started to confide a little. She said that she felt no one liked her, and the boys at school didn't notice her, unlike Brittany, who was liked by many. Jay then asked if this was the reason she pushed Brittany. Kayla just cried and said, how to fix it if she did something really bad. Suddenly, Rebecca returned and stopped their conversation. She said that Detective Kenji would soon come and wanted to talk to Kayla. Moments later, Detective Kenji arrived and wanted detailed information about Brittany. Here, Kayla was asked several questions about her closeness to Brittany and when she last met her. Kayla seemed a bit stuttering in answering some of the questions. When Detective Kenji asked how Brittany's relationship with her father was, Kayla started to tear up, saying that Brittany often told her that her father was hot-tempered and often hit her. Rebecca was a bit shocked by Kayla's slightly exaggerated confession, as was Jay who heard it from upstairs. The next day, Detective Kenji and her partner met with Sam to ask about the possible abuse. But Sam, with a bit of emotion, said he never hit his daughter. He even reported Brittany's disappearance to the police, but they hadn't responded yet because it hadn't been 48 hours. Meanwhile, Jay and Kayla went to Jay's place. There, they were greeted by Trini with a rather annoyed look because Trini had found a woman's wallet in Jay's car. It was actually Brittany's wallet, and her phone was inside. They argued until Kayla, without realizing it, left her father to go home alone. But when she walked, suddenly Sam came and asked about Brittany. Kayla could only apologize, saying she didn't expect it to go this far. Sam became more curious about Kayla's words and kept forcing her to explain what really happened. Panicking, Kayla screamed and ran away until she managed to hide in her house. On the other hand, Rebecca was visited by Detective Kenji and her partner. They said there were some discrepancies in Rebecca and Sam's statements, and the police also found the last signal location of Brittany's phone near Jay's residence. When Rebecca arrived home, she immediately asked Jay about this, and was so upset because he had kept the phone, leading to an unavoidable argument. Kayla, seeing this, became even more distraught. The next day, Detective Kenji and her partner came to Rebecca's house. They showed an email that Kayla had sent to Brittany. The email contained a death threat to Brittany for taking her boyfriend. Then, Detective Kenji also asked if Jay knew about a bridge near the last location Brittany was seen. Of course, Jay said he had never been there. But surprisingly, Detective Kenji revealed Kayla's inhaler that was found near the bridge. At this point, she asked Rebecca and Jay to be honest about everything, because the police were now searching the area, and it was only a matter of time before Brittany's body would be found. Feeling cornered, Rebecca immediately kicked them out of the house. That night, Jay and Rebecca planned to bury Brittany's wallet and phone near Sam's house. They did this so that the police would track the phone signal and suspect Sam as the perpetrator. Jay was responsible for burying them while Rebecca monitored Sam's house. But suddenly Rebecca was startled by Sam's arrival. He immediately asked where his daughter was. Panicking, Rebecca called Jay. Sam, already furious, shook Rebecca hard until Jay came and hit him, pushing his head into the river. But Rebecca quickly stopped him. Sam then said he knew the culprit was Kayla and that they were protecting her. Rebecca hurriedly ran away from there, but on the road, Sam blocked their car. Rebecca, in her rage, kept pressing the gas and hit Sam. But after getting out and seeing Sam's condition, Jay and Rebecca panicked and wanted to call the police. But Jay stopped her. They saw Sam, who was dying, begging for help, but they ignored him until he died. They returned home, trying to calm down, but they couldn't hide their guilt. They began to cry because they couldn't handle it. They then started cleaning the car slowly, trying to hold back their sadness while cleaning the stains. Suddenly they heard a knock on the door and someone came in. 
they were both shocked to see that it was Brittany, who looked perfectly fine. It turned out that Brittany had planned all of this to meet her boyfriend, which was why she made all these lies. Kayla just went along with it. Rebecca and Jay were speechless hearing Brittany's explanation. Then, seeing the blood-stained cloth in Rebecca's hand, Brittany looked worried and left immediately. At home, they met Kayla. Here, Kayla explained that she wanted to be honest with them, but at that moment, Kayla heard her parents laughing together again, like before they divorced. So, Kayla wanted to feel that happiness a little longer. At the end of the story, they hugged each other until shortly after. They heard a knock on the door and police sirens approaching. Then the film ends. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Because by subscribing, you have supported me to make better videos. See you in the next video.